more important than the lineage of the kings and queens. So we can be a part of that lineage. So, so how how does one become a part of this lineage? The moment you say that the just the prince is going to become the the king, likewise. I want to become a Buddha. I want to become a fully enlightened being to benefit all beings. The moment this is your aspiration, you become the chart of the lineage. Okay, once you become chart of the lineage, okay, just tell me. We can't really expect that in three days' time, then you are just totally transformed, right? But at least in your mind, if there is a possibility, and particularly if the way is easy, then I want to really uh, come out with my full potential. Raise your hands. Who want to do that? If the way is easy, right? <laughs> right? I want to make this full potential come out. That I become fearless and I have the maximum happiness. I want to. Uh, how many of you want to do that? Yes. If this is your aspiration, so now the moment you raise hands, what you are saying is that you are expressing the seed, the presence of this seed, to be the child of the lineage. Right? And then later on, later on, as you study more, as you're more exposed, and then you come to realize that, yes, this is the way. This is the very joyous, happy way by which to, to make a meaning out of my life. Right? Then at that point, you really become the child of a lineage. So, as the child of a lineage, what is your job? Your job is to really work, to take steps to reach the air. Right? I'm the shadow of lineage, if you don't take step at all to become the, the Buddha, then so it is just in words. So you have to take step. What step? Step to realize the wisdom. The wisdom, the light. The light which takes you closer towards enlightenment. So what is that wisdom? How should the child of a lineage practice the perfection of wisdom? Perfection of wisdom. How should you practice it? This question. Professional wisdom is the wisdom to see everything as like a dream. Wisdom to see everything like a dream. So the benefit of seeing everything like a dream, and don't exaggerate. Don't exaggerate, okay, I learned that, we have to see everything like a dream. If you don't see everything as like a dream, and still you just imagine it's like a dream, it doesn't work. But the thing is the reality, the Buddha did not invent the reality. The Buddha did not invent the reality, Buddha only discovered the reality. The Buddha only discovered the reality, and what he's teaching is he's not indoctrinating, or he's not, say, teaching like a dogma, but he's teaching us, or he's pointing to the reality which he discovered, and he's telling us that as long as you don't discover the reality, you continue to suffer. As long as you don't discover the reality that the dream is dream, <clears throat> as long as you don't discover that the dream is dream, you'll continue to suffer in the dream. The moment you discover that the dream is not real, the dream is dream, you're afraid from the nightmare of the dream, right? So, what happens to dream is exactly what is happening outside the dream. So dream is of two kinds, conventional dream and unconventional dream. Conventional dream is the dream we used to have. Just now, we all got up and we had the whatever dreams. That is conventional dream. Unconventional dream is what we are seeing now. This another form of dream. And from this we have never woken up. If somebody's woken up, for sure you would not come to this class. Right? Because what I'm teaching at the most, I can take you to the intellectual understanding. And it's your job to get to the experiential understanding. So somebody who reached to that level of the experience will not come to this class. Right? Okay, so the, the, the point is that we need to be awakened, not only from the conventional dream, but also from the unconventional dream. Okay, so once you become awakened from that, you are not going to be affected by the dreams anymore, content of the dreams anymore. Unconventional dream is the samsara. We wake up from the, the dream, unconventional dream of samsara. We wake up from that and you are not going to be affected by external factors anymore, no fear anymore. So that is the fearlessness. And then you work further to expand this, this mind towards infinite beings that will attract the infinite happiness. So question one is, how should the child of the lineage practice the perfection of wisdom, number one? Then Aravalukteshvara, point number two. What is the response given by Aravalukteshvara? So the response given was that, that <clears throat> what we should practice 
You should practice to discover the reality. And everything is like a dream. Then, Aravalukiteshvara, when you decree detail as to how the self, yourself, is like a dream, and how the people that you're seeing around is like a dream, how everything that you encounter, for example, within yourself, you have the body and the mind, the five aggregates, they're all like dream. And then the world that you're interacting with, the six objects, the six subjects, and the six mediums, totally the, the 18 elements, six objects, six objects meaning what you see, visual, then auditory, gustatory, olfactory, and the tactility. So these six objects and the six subjects, your eyes, ears, nose, so forth, the eye consciousness, nose consciousness and six, plus the six mediums, eye sense power, ear sense power, nose sense power, and so forth. Six objects, six subjects, and six mediums through which we interact with the world. All these 18 elements, they are like dream. And then, say, even the Four Noble Truths, which we studied, um, the, the, even the Four Noble Truths through which we, we are being sucked up in the samsara and we, we are being, we exit from the samsara, even they are like dream. Travelings of dependent origination, which the, the painting is in the, on the last cover, the last page, Travelings of dependent origination, how, even through which we revolve around samsara, even they are like dream. So once you see everything like a dream, seeing the suffering as a dream, you wake up from the suffering, no more suffering. Okay, so this is, the, the response given by, was that, that everything is like a dream. We have to discover that. Okay, what's the benefit? Number three, the benefit. Benefit, it says here, <clears throat> uh, page 25, <clears throat> page 25, second, parag second paragraph, which reads, Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and thus without fear. So all our fear dissolves. This is the, the benefit. All our fears, the moment you wake up from the sleep of ignorance, uh, the, the fears dissolve. The moment you wake up from the conventional dream, all the nightmare, the dream nightmare stops. Okay, so these are three points that we are not to miss as we recite the Heart Sutra. Let's read this together now. <clears throat> I prostrate to the Ali Tribal Jan. Thus did I hear at one time the Buddha was dwelling on a mass of vultures mountain in Rajgriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time the Buddha was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound illumination. Also at that time the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arabhateshvara looked upon the very practice of profound illumination of wisdom and beheld those five magnigis also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of the Buddha, when the Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravadukteshvara, <coughs> he said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravadukteshvara said this to the Venerable Shariputra, Putra, Shari Putra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage, who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom, should look upon it like this correctly and repeatedly, beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, fading, discrimination, composite factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are empty, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, sinless, not without stain not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no fading, no discrimination, no composite factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no smell, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, up to and including no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering or origination, cessation in part. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shari Buddha, therefore, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the professional wisdom, the mind without obscuration, and thus without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of Nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly <coughs> Perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, 
unsurpassed mantra, mantra equal to God in fault, mantra that totally depends by all suffering, should be known as truth since it's not false. The mother of the professional wisdom is declared, Yatha Om Gade Gade Para Gade Para Sangade Bodhiswaha. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva of Mahasattva, should train in the profound professional wisdom like that. Then the Buddha arose from their concentration and commanded the Bodhisattva Mahasattva out of the Vitishvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound professional wisdom just as you have indicated, even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Buddha had thus spoken the Venerable Sharit Vadiputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva out of the Vitishvara, who was surrounded the entirety all over the world of gods, humans, asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised as spoken by the Buddha. Okay, let's recite this mantra seven times. As we recite this mantra, um, let us imagine that the Buddha Shakyamuni so compassionately exalts us thus. Don't remain in the fears of samsara. Come, come towards ultimate happiness by awakening the seed of perfection within yourself. And you hearing this melodious voice of the Buddha Shakyamuni, we inspire you, your parents, we inspire all the family members, including children, we inspire all sentient beings, informing them, look, this is what a compassion teacher Buddha Shakyamuni has taught us. Let us not remain in the fears of samsara anymore. Let us all go towards the ultimate happiness. And everybody so happily joins you in this journey of awakening the super profession within themselves to leave samsara, to reach to the state of the highest happiness. <coughs> Eta Om Gade Gade By teaching, uh, by the teachings of the three supreme jewels possessing the power of the truth, may in and out of humans be transformed, may they be dispelled, may they be non-existent, may they be pacified, may all negative forces opposed to the Dharma be completely pacified, may the host of 80,000 obstacles be pacified, may we be separated from problems and conditions harmful to the Dharma, may all enjoyments be accord with the Dharma, may all species and perfect happiness pervade this place now. Okay, some of you may be wondering why clapping. Okay, this it's just it, it's just a convention. It's just a convention, convention to to avert, convention to dispel the the obstacles, dispel the deductions of obstacles and so forth. For example, say what is this sign? Victory. Huh? Victory. Huh? Victory. Victory. Huh? It's victory. No. Huh? Oh, okay. on the convention. Do you know that? So, if somebody like this, what is this? No, this is not for victory, is it? Peace. Is it the is it the peace? So, what is this? Peace. Huh? 
Huh? Victory. Oh, I see. <laughs> What's the sound of peace? What is this? Good. Huh? Good. One good, then two good. <laughs> no, it's just a convention. There's nothing good about it. But when you say this, yeah, then, okay, this is what he meant by, what she meant, means by good, right? It's good. Okay, it's just convention. Likewise, clapping, all these things are just conventions. Convention. Convention, and the convention is what makes the world, right? Some conventions are so good, very constructive. Some conventions are just very destructive. Some conventions are very destructive. Conventions are created by people, and what is created, they can really destroy the people. They can really bring about disharmony in the community. But some construct the the conventions are so so beneficial. And what the world is, world is just filled with conventions. Beyond conventions, nothing is there. Okay, this is what we're going to learn. Okay, so with this in mind. They say the clapping is a gesture. It's a convention to dispel the, the water to water of the obstacles. Okay. <clears throat> Next turn to page 29. Assembling practice. So now the whole purpose is to let's say to build a house, to build a say, proper big house. First of all, we need to gather the ingredients. We need to gather the materials. So likewise, to undertake this journey, the journey of awakening the seed of perfection within yourself, this is the most important journey, at the same time, most difficult journey. So, because it is a very important journey, we need to have the, we need to gather the ingredients. We need to gather the materials. The materials uh, to make us strong, to make sure that this journey is, is completed. For that matter, the, the Buddhas, they found seven, the seven practices, if we engage in these seven practices, will make us strong to undertake this journey. Okay, the first one is making frustrations. Frustrations is a gesture of respect. With the respect, what happens is that you become receptive to learn from the other side, to learn about how to awaken this mind. Then the next one is making offerings. So make offerings is opening your mind, opening your mind and becoming close, becoming close towards the, uh, the source of inspiration, like what is both samples. So the moment you're closer to us, as the, 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 the metals, ordinary metals, they're closer to the magnet, they require this, the, they, they require the property of the attraction. You know that? Some of the younger ones may not be knowing that. The magnet, if you know, the ordinary iron, if you put it close to the magnet for some time, then this iron will also attract the quality of the attraction. You know that, younger ones? Elder ones like me, we all know that. <laughs> younger ones, okay, this is quality. So the closer you are to the source, you will acquire these qualities. If you sit with somebody who is very nasty, you will also acquire these qualities, very nasty qualities. If you sit with good people, you will acquire the good qualities. So. This is a, the make offerings is a gesture of connecting yourself, bring yourself close to the uh, to the, 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 the three jewels so that you will acquire these qualities. That the next one is confess, confessing, confessing the negativities. Confessing negativities, this journey is a journey, is a very important journey where the road has been blocked. Road is blocked because of our negativities. This road is none other than your own mind. Your mind is blocked with these negativities, defilements, which we learned yesterday. The defilements, negative is form of defilements. These defilements, they stop the visibility of the Buddha nation inside. So that must be cleared. One way by which to clear these defilements in a most efficient way is by confessing the negativities, acknowledging the negativities and confessing. The next one's rejoicing. This is so important, rejoicing. Rejoicing in the virtues of yourself. Rejoice in the virtues of others. Rejoice in the virtues of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. This is so important. So what is said is that, say, and then later on, you will you will come to get the sense of this. What is said is that, uh, for example, let's say that uh, some of you might have seen that His Holiness the Dalai Lama, when he gives like the big big teachings for like lakhs and lakhs of people. So there, uh, what happens is that the the people who 
who are the donors or who are the supporter of the, what do you call it, the sponsors, the main sponsors of the teachings, they got the opportunity to offer this uh, scarf in front of a huge public, offer the scarf to his in this, that, that, that. And then, we, since that we don't have this much of money to, to sponsor the thing, how I wish I'm also there. Right? We think like this, we think like this, but the point is that nobody's there. The thing is that the, okay, he's very fortunate, she's very fortunate that getting the opportunity to offer a scarf, that is holiness, okay, that's fine. But what is more important is finally the purpose must be there. It's not just, you know, the, the, the display that people will see what you're doing. This is not the point. The point is that your journey towards your awakening, the Buddha nature, that should be, that should happen more and more. That should happen. So how does that happen? It happens in two ways. Where your merit increases, where your wisdom increases. Wisdom and the merit. These two should grow. If these two are not growing, even if you are there with the, in front of his own Islam for a lifetime, if these two are not growing, the whole purpose is defeated. Even if you're not there, but you're seeing his holiness, the Dalai Lama, and seeing other people there, and then your wisdom and the merit grows. This whole purpose, whole purpose of the even the whole the teaching, is for that purpose, and that is happening within you. So we should not forget the purpose. With that in mind, with that in mind, now say this person, oh, this person is so fortunate. He's able to sponsor the, the teaching, and how many people have benefited? It's amazing. I cannot do it. Don't worry. So, if you want to accumulate the same amount of merit the way this person did, you can actually accumulate the greater amount, greater amount of merit than this person did. How? Is just rejoice. Just rejoice. It's so good. Thank you so much. Because of you, you made all these lakhs and lakhs of people can access, have access to his holiness to the Dalai Lama's teachings. You are so kind. I just rejoice in what you did. What you did. I'm so happy for you. May you live long. Uh, you rejoice instead of jealousy, instead of competition. You rejoice. Your merit multiplies. To what extent? Depends on you. Say, if your spiritual realization and the donor's spiritual realization, if do, these two are equal, then you accumulate the equal amount of merit to rejoicing. Equal amount of merit which the per other person accumulated. Whereas if your spiritual realization is lower, other person's spiritual realization is higher, then you get a half of what the other person accumulated. If your spiritual, spiritual realization is more, greater, than the, the donor, then the amount of the merit that accumulate is double the amount the other person accumulated. So, rejoicing. And rejoicing, you can just sit and rejoice. You don't have to spend even one she shekel. <laughs> Still, you can accumulate that amount, but it's very difficult. How a mind behaves. How a mind behaves, why this person uh, is getting a privilege of being there with, next to his holiness, offering his cup directly, why not others? All these negative thoughts can come in, right? So while it does not involve any money, it does not involve any energy, you just sit there and rejoice. But to rejoice is not easy. Okay, this is again another training that we have to go through. So the point, next point is rejoicing. So rejoicing, learn how to rejoice in others' goodness. Learn how to rejoice. This is so precious. So precious. The next is request for teachings. Request for teachings. So finally, our job is what? That we have to remove the darkness of the ignorance. To remove the darkness of the ignorance which we don't know. So we have, to, we have the potential to know. So for that matter, we have to request the Buddhists and Bodhisattvas to give us teachings, to guide us. Okay. The next is requesting the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to be with us till all sentient beings are in samsara. So, uh, the, only if they are with us, we are in the safe hands. If they are not with us, we will never come out of samsara, the other in situation. And then finally, dedicating the virtues. So these are the dedicating virtues. Yesterday we said it. Say the motivation is very important. And the motivation in the, before we, Begin. In the beginning, the motivation is very important. In the end, dedication is very important. 
because the delegation decides where whatever version that you did, whether it's going to be used productively or constructively or destructively, it's determined by the delegation. Delegation, for example, say the um, the say somebody has some amount of wealth accumulated over the over his or her life time. And then towards the end of his or her life, okay, so this money I will give to let's say to a charity. To a charity who takes care of the the destitute children's education. And then otherwise, okay, this money will some people this money will go to my dog. Some people they dedicate all their money for their pet dog. You know that? Oh it's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong, it's up to the individual. But then the pet dog will not know that I have this amount of few billion few billion dollars in my bank. The pet, the pet dog will get a food, that's it. Right? And food the pet dog will get in any ways. So what's the point of this? Whereas if that is donated for a charity, for a greater purpose, for the education, for the health, for the needy people, for food of the people, even food for the dogs, not necessarily for human beings, even food for the dogs. For example, I know some young girls, so, so kind, working to help the stray dogs, giving food to the stray dogs, and stray dogs also being abandoned of course, the, some dogs, the pedigree dogs, and then later on, as they grow older, they're abandoned. So she's taking care of all these dogs, which we are being abandoned. So kind. So on a large scale, not just to one dog, right? But to this amount of money, it can be done. So many can be used very meaningfully. So dedication plays a very important role. So why some money, huge amount of wealth, go waste, and why even a small amount is of great benefit to a large number of the, the people or the, the, the dogs, animals and so forth. How? So for example, one of my teachers, one of my teachers who is now almost 90. So whatever, whatever say the, say the, the belongings, possessions that he has, he just put them all together and then he donated to our monastery. And what? Okay, monastery. No. So wise. He's a brilliant, brilliant logician and a brilliant philosopher and a great professional. So what he said is that, okay, this, the, the, the wealth, or what do you call it, the possession that I have, okay, goes to the monastery, but the monastery makes sure that the line of the, the scholarship meaning the, the scholarly activities. This must go for the scholarly activities of the monastery. Then the scholarly activities of the monastery does not diminish, it does not die. So this will go to the bank and from this the, the, the interest, the only the interest will be used to sponsor three or five scholars every year to write books <coughs> on emptiness, on bodhicitta and so forth. So that the scholarly tradition is remained intact, does not die. No, these are the, the visions. So likewise, they, so that way, dedication plays a very important role as to in what way the good things that you did is of greater benefit or smaller benefit and entirely decided by the dedication. So dedication plays a very important role, one. Number two, without the dedication, then things can easily easily disappear or easily be nullified by any other person factors. Okay, these are some limbs. Let's say this together. So why I'm doing this is um, because there are some people who are already into this practice and then not knowing the significance, not knowing uh, how to do it properly, so for the reason. And then for those of us who are new, okay, it's interesting, these are things, you are getting new information. Okay. <clears throat> I bow down to the youthful Arimajushri. You are the Buddhas, the lions amongst humans, God of freedom in the present, past and future, in the worlds of ten directions. To all of you with the body, speech and same mind, I bow down. <coughs> with a sense of deep respect and with as many bodies as atoms of the world, to all you Buddhas visualize this real, I bow down. On every particle are Buddhas numberless as particles. Okay. 
He is amid the host of bodhisattvas and confident in the sphere of all phenomena is entirely filled with that Buddhas in this way. But 